It's not about motivation. Winners need discipline. Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with Box Row. It's a late one on Sunday night. Uh, the return of Dillian White, Gareth, we thought we'd get a quick reaction. Um, he's won. He's come back uh, 18 months or so out the ring and he's got himself a third round stoppage against Christian Hammer. Yeah, I mean, he's joined Tyson Fury, Alexander Povetkin, Frank Sanchez, um, Huey Fury, Joe Joyce, latterly to have stopped Christian Hammer. So, you know, he's got that on his record. He's made a statement. Hammer didn't fancy fighting him. I know it was an injury, but um, you suspect Hammer was 270-odd pounds against Dillian's 250. Didn't fancy it with Dillian. Uh, he looked really up for it throughout the week. Shame it wasn't on the TV network, by the way, which was a bit disappointing. Um, but Dillian is back in the win column, back in the mix. And, you know, as I say, he's in that list of other fighters who have defeated Christian Hammer, who's very much a gatekeeper for the higher echelons of the heavyweight division. Yeah, for some reason, I'm surprised, that, like you said there, there wasn't any kind of TV coverage, like even a stream or anything. But uh, yeah. I've got a very shot. Got a shout at Lewis Hart, Jonathan Nagioff. I hope I said that right. And the boxing tickets in Northern Ireland who were giving live Twitter updates. So that's where yeah. I got most of the information from. But by the looks of it, uh, Dillian was dominating the fight, um, had a few big swings and misses in round three. And then at the end of round three, uh, Christian Hammer had a bloody nose and his corner pulled him out. And apparently it was some sort of shoulder complaint. Uh, but Dillian White wasn't too happy. Um, what, what do you think happens in them scenarios? Because he's obviously been brought in to give Dillian White some rounds, but obviously... Yeah. He'll have wanted the rounds. He'll have wanted to make a big statement, KO real viral video for, you know, to do the rounds, but he obviously hasn't got that because um, Hammer's retired at the end of that third round, as you, as you pointed out. Um, but as the dust settles, the key for it is Dillian White is back. Um, obviously, it's a disappointment that it wasn't on live TV, but at the same time, like you say, he he um, dominated Hammer, if you like, um, and and he's back in the mix. He's back in the Saudi Super League mix, and he and he is a very good opponent for Anthony Joshua. If Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk fight twice, um, he, he's a great opponent out there for him. We were going to get that fight last year anyway. We didn't because of the contaminate, contaminated substance that was found in this system. That has been proved by the testing system. And, and he's not facing a ban, which is good for him. Um, Dillian's a big, rumbunctious, great character, uh, heavyweight boxer who is great in the mix. He's another Jarrell Miller type figure. People aren't sure about him. I'd love to see him face Anthony Joshua again. And if they find um, an opening in the door, because Joshua um, has to wait out for longer than it, than is expected against Tyson Fury, then uh, he's a viable opponent. But I do think my instinct is, seeing how His Excellency Turkey El Sheikh's doing it, that if there isn't a very, very close fight between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk, I think they'll make, and Fury wins uh, convincingly against uh, Alexander Usyk, um, then I think they'll put Tyson Fury against Anthony Joshua next. What do you make of Dillian being quite open to do interviews? Because I watched a few of his in the last few days. He's openly talked about the case, etc. And he hasn't gone into any detail. He's, he's obviously just said like there's certain things I can't talk about, but he's not being shy away from answering anything. Yeah, but he's been good because he's kept his counsel for a long time. It was a wise thing to do to not make a lot of noise when this happened last year um, and just go silent, go quiet, drop his head down, get in the long grass. And now he's able to talk about it. He's been exonerated um, and he can talk about it with, even though there's still things that are sub judice, I think they're under legal wraps. He's able, Boxing King Media, to just kind of explain a little bit on what he's gone through kind of mentally and emotionally having to step out all this time where he's wanted to say a few things and he's just kept us quiet and it's worked for him like he hasn't got any flack people are happy he's back mm -hmm. um 
and happy that he's proven that it didn't make any sense at the time that he would take a banned substance before he fought Anthony Joshua for me. Big payday, big night, chance to create an upset. It didn't make any sense that he'd be cheating. Uh, and then just quickly, because I'm going to marry these two stories up, Joe Joyce last night, um, loads of different feedback, uh, lots of different feedback coming from the fight against Cash Ali. Most people expected Joe to stop him in a couple of rounds. Obviously, he went 10 rounds. Uh, a lot of people are saying Joe looked slow and clumbersome, etc., uh, saying that he took too many shots. Um, but I've got a different viewpoint. I've seen Joe fight from ringside a few times now and I'll be honest he looked exactly the same to me speed wise he's always fought with that hand speed so I, I don't really get why people are saying he looked slow because he, he he that's his style oh, Saturday night that. Joe Joyce um, did a 10 round demolition job on Cash Ali Cash Ali didn't come to fight we know he's got the dangerous overhand right um, we'd spoken a bit a lot I think on or off the record last week about the Paul Butlin knockout. Um, you'd indicated it to me. I'd seen it before in the past anyway, but it was a great reminder. I went back and looked at it. Um, and Cash was looking at that from the opening bell. In fact, I think he landed one in the first round. Um, and um, But Cash didn't come to... F I don't mean this in any way disrespectfully. Cash came to survive and throw that right hand. That was his game plan. He played, played possum on the ropes. You can look at it negatively or possibly. Or, or, or positively, Joe stopped him in the 10th, got 10 rounds of good action in, got 10 rounds under his belt. He's been out for a little while, got his confidence back. I spoke to Joe after the event. I spoke to Marvellous, his mum today as well. They're pleased. Joe said he's going to go back and watch it. Um, it's a shame it wasn't a more dramatic knockout. He said he's not going to be hard on himself. He's, he's done what he needed to do. I think the rounds are good for him. That's the positive side of it. Um, and the way Cash fought him, he didn't come for a war. He came to survive. Um, so I think Joe did a good job. Um, and again, both guys, Joe Joyce and Dillian White, are in the Super League mix. They're there for Anthony Joshua, for um, a rematch with Joseph Parker in terms of Joe Joyce. There's loads of fights there for them. But realistically, it's quite interesting that Dillian picked... Hammer, because Hammer's last loss, funnily enough, was to Joe Joyce. I don't think Joe stopped him in round four. So do you think that he was deliberately picked as a comeback opponent? Yeah. Because because uh, Joe mentioned him as well in his post fight interview, said he wants that fight. So you know, if if they go head to head now, looking at the inactivity of Dillian and how Joe looked, uh, who's the favorite in that fight? <sighs> Dillian against Joe Joyce. Oh, they have a battle, those two. That's, it's a good fight, isn't it? It is. I see Joe Joyce as the favourite. It's a really good fight. Um, it's a really good fight. It's a really good call. I hadn't thought about putting the two together on a card in Saudi Arabia. And mm -hmm. if you think about it, Christian Hammer is a... Uh, obviously, he's Romanian out of um, fighting out of Germany. He was the guy that Tyson Fury fought before he fought and beat Vladimir Klitschko as well. Mm -hmm. he, he's very much a timeline on the last decade of the heavyweight division in many ways. Yeah, I've got, I'm going to go with Joe Joyce um, winning a very good, well-fought, hard points decision against um, Dillian White. Uh, I'm going to quickly move on because uh, I know you look very tired. You've had a long day. No, today. I don't look tired at all. But you look like you've you had a long day. I have had a long day, but do I, I don't look tired at all. Yeah. Gareth is still on it. Is that a tired looking man? No, it's not. I take that back, Gareth. I take it back. Uh, but just a, a quick one. You won't Don't know. Don't even have any questions for me for the fans today. Uh, I I'm thought really, I'd really disappointed. I thought I'd save them for uh, later in the week. A I rainy think. day. Yeah, yeah, I'll save them for later. Because I've got a few, but I'm going to save them for later in the week. But a quick one on Cash Ali. You won't know this, but... He didn't emphasize it in the interview, but he told me off camera, he showed me his left hand. I don't know if you noticed in the fight, he never used his left hand. He bust mm -hmm. his left hand three weeks ago. Um, oh, okay. so he basically was fighting with one hand, but uh, but that's that. And um, moving on to the awards, Shane McGuigan, trainer of the year, Lee Wood, fighter of the year, deserved awards. Yeah, I was there. I've been there all day, actually. I've mm -hmm. just literally got home. 
Um, Shane McGuigan's done a brilliant job uh, with, uh, notably, as he mentioned in, the, in his awards acceptance, um, Chris Pillam Smith, who was a raw fighter when he came to him seven and a half years ago. Um, he's done a great job with other fighters. George Groves, for example, people forget that he took to a world title against Shudinov. Um, I was there that night and it was a great night for George. Was it third or fourth time of offering? Probably third. It might have been fourth. Um, um, Caroline Dubois doing great things with Adam Azim. Um, I'm trying to think of the others right now. Um, but he's done a great job. I think, you know, obviously he was with um, David Hay for a while. He's a really good trainer. He's very astute. He and Ben Davison, and I spoke to Ben Davison, who had Jordan Gill and uh, uh, and Lee Wood on his table. I'll come to Lee in a minute. And his father, Grant, who's a guy I've known for a long time as well. Ben's father. Um, yeah, I thought... Looks very young, don't he, Ben's father? Well, he must be... I'm, I met him. 50. Yeah, I what met him. It? I couldn't believe it was Ben's dad. No, no, he's going to be 50, isn't he? Because Ben's 30. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was, he was Ben's brother. Well, Ben would love to hear that. So would Grant. Mm. Um, but I think, you know, Ben might have been in the frame tonight as well. Great work by Shane McGuigan over the last couple of years. That boxer stable is very talented. A lot of young fighters. I'm still picking Fabio Wardley to beat Fraser Clark. I may be wrong on the 31st on, on Easter Sunday. No doubt I'll see you that day mm -hmm. um, with your Easter eggs. I want an Easter egg, by the way, from you for all these chats. Um, oh, a good one on a good one. I want some dark chocolate and I want some fondant inside it as well. Um, and I are expect you, are, to you share. That, are you saying that because I'm munching the strawberries in a milkshake? I know you're really making me feel hungry because you've got, um, because you've got some kind of weird kind of uh, what is it, milkshake from Uber that is making me feel really because yeah. I'm starving, hungry, it's, and it's, thirsty. Yeah. It's a strawberry milkshake, and I've got some strawberry. Yeah, that's horrible. Just you just make me feel bad because I would love a bit of that. Bring me a strawberry milkshake and a big fondant Easter egg on that <laughs> on that Sunday afternoon. Hold me to that. If you've got any questions about Easter eggs, and uh, you know what, which kind of Easter eggs we favour in in this part of the world, and all that kind of thing, do send your questions mm -hmm. into Boxing King Media. Um, so, yeah, Shane thoroughly deserved it. And I think Lee Wood's been extraordinary. I mean, he's, he is a great fighter. Was Conlon last year or not? Was that the year before? Yeah, um, I can't remember. But... Yeah, well, well, the fights against Josh Warrington were amazing. The re Look, he, he lost to Mauricio oh. Lara. He rematched him. Again, Ben Davidson pulled him out the seventh, didn't he? And he went back and completely outboxed Mauricio Lara in the second fight. And then three months after, and then he beat Josh Warrington, stopping him in fine fashion. And I think he's a great pick as uh, British Fighter of the Year, in my view. Absolutely great. But I'm trying to think who the Overseas Fighter of the Year was. Was Betabia, Varta Betabia, and Mel Tamagliu went up to pick that up. Fight of the Year, I think, was Fight of the Year was Yard and, and um, Betabia, mm. by the way. Um, very well deserved as Anthony said in his acceptance speech I'm here taking this award but I didn't win but it was such a memorable fight if you recall it was just a quick one on these awards do the winners already know that they're going to win before they arrive no I don't think so oh, I right. don't think because so. yeah. obviously really... it would have been fairly obvious that the train of the year award would have gone to either Shane McGuigan or Ben Davison. So I bet it was I bet it was tense in there just before they announced it because I don't think people would have been like, who's going to get it? Well, I, I, Shane was at a table quite far at the back. It's a lovely uh, venue, by the way, and it's a brilliant lunch. I've got to say, my hats did, off. Did to Shane and Ben say. speak to each other because they're two great boxing minds? I'm sure they would. Mm. I'm sure, they're both you know very very formidable young trainers. Um, but hats off to Robert Smith, the Boxing Board of Control General Secretary and his team, Dennis and Matt and Donna and all those guys. They they that 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 lunch and and I pref I prefer it being a lunch. We used to go to Lancaster Gate Hotel and have a uh, have a dinner. Obviously, I've been going for many years. It's so good as a luncheon and on a Sunday because people don't drink as much. 
there's more stories told. You've got to get ready on a Sunday morning to go, you know, into the heart of central London for a midday start, a noon start. And it's, it's so uplifting to see everyone in the industry. So uplifting. It really is. Good stuff, Gareth. Um, well, I'm sure there's going to be loads of stuff breaking in the next few days. You know, Dilly wants to call out. I've just been looking online. There's no interviews for me that have been put out yet. So uh, let's see what happens on that front. He's back. He's back. He's in the wind column. He's a big, rumbustious figure in the heavyweight division. He deserves his place at the top table. He's in the top 10, top 15 in the world anyway. He deserves his place in the Super League. Right. Let's see what happens, Gareth. Thank you for your time. And uh, I'll catch you later in the week. I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals.